KXAZ News Channel 3. First look at 4. Today on First Look at 4, we're making a fan favorite at the dinner table. How does lasagna sound? Fantastic. Yeah. Take a look at that. And we have an expert here in our studio dishing out some of his secrets, too. Then, a little later on in this hour, we are talking about safety. Look at that. Yikes. On the seashore, those beach umbrellas can be a real hazard if they aren't set up right. We have some important tips before your next family getaway. And we just have a few fair weather clouds out there this afternoon. Still warm and muggy, but we will have a brief break from that humidity heading into the weekend, but not before we get in on a shower or two. I'll detail the forecast straight ahead. Good afternoon, I'm Erica Bivens. And I'm Tim Ear. Thanks for joining us on First Look at Four. First this afternoon, celebrating more than 30,000 meals handed out during the summer meal program in Cabell County Schools. Yeah, even though summer is winding down, the board announced they'll be continuing a free breakfast and lunch program actually into the school year for the second year in a row now. News Channel 3's Leanne Schinkel joins us. And Leanne, you actually spoke with teachers and parents today who say they've really seen an impact. Kids in Cabell County will go to school every day knowing they will get a breakfast and a lunch. School leaders announced today the county will provide meals at no cost to families. That means every student in the county, no matter a family's income, will eat for free this year. This will be the second year for the Universal program. I spoke with Carrie Rizzocco, who is a teacher at Explorer Academy. She says this program has really helped students be more productive in the classroom. They were really tired, and they're not as tired anymore. There's definitely, they're more alert, especially in the mornings. It, they come in, and they're, you can tell they're tired, and then they eat, and they get that energy, and they're ready to go. And another benefit, Rosanico says, she has also seen a decrease in tardiness, tardiness because if the kids are late, they miss breakfast. The school system True. also yeah. took part in a study that proved yeah. breakfast programs improve student concentration, alertness, and memory. Yeah, Mem doctors have been yeah. talking about that for years, exactly, the importance right. of a good breakfast to get started. They, they call it the most important meal of the day. Yeah, my parents instilled that one in me. It's probably why yep. I hate oatmeal so much, but um, <laughs> I think it did good, Leanne. Yeah, Thanks so much. True. Thanks, Leanne. <laughs> and we should mention the Capital County School Board gets reimbursed by the USDA for at least some of those meal costs. All right, let's talk about the weather as we inch closer and closer to the weekend. Oh, yeah, I like that W word. <laughs> there have been some clouds overhead today, but uh, it's been great as far as the temperature goes. Kind of a really nice day. Yeah. Good day to wash the dog today. Not if you're a dog, That's but random, but I, wash the accurate. Dog. Yeah. yeah, it was today was washing the dog day outside ah, because you know okay. you take advantage of those summer days to, yeah, to be outside. Let them dry outside. I mean, yeah, exactly. Right. There is still a little bit of humidity, yeah. but it's not yeah. excessive. No. No. And as we head into the weekend, it is gonna get before some wet weather takes us back to work on Monday. We're talking a couple of days with some showers back in the forecast. I'm just going to have some tunnel vision for the weekend for now. Good. It's looking good. Hey, tunnel yeah. vision works in this right. case. Yeah, yeah right. even tomorrow. Not, not a bad yeah. day. Very just comfortable. You're right. A shower or two. Right. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Thanks Chelsea. Chelsea. Now to a developing story we're following out of West Virginia's capital, where lawmakers are once again listening to testimony to determine whether to move forward with those impeachment proceedings involving the state Supreme Court. Well, this process actually started weeks ago after former Chief Justice Alan Loffrey was federally indicted. He's now facing 23 criminal charges. News Channel 3's Jatera McGee has been following those hearings and joins us now live with the latest details. Hey, Jatera. Hey, Tim and Erica. Yeah, lawmakers are getting ready to take a much needed break. They've been uh, interviewing the same witness, Steve Canterbury, for the last three hours straight, six hours all day, and they're expected to go into the evening hours. Now, Canterbury is the former administrator for the Supreme Court, um, and he's been testifying about confusion and conflict between him and some of the justices, as well as some of those allegations against the, them. This has been been a very tedious process, a very lengthy process, and you may remember Canterbury was the original whistle, whistleblower, rather, after he was fired in January of 2017. He hasn't been holding back on the stand today, testifying and calling out many of the justices. He also is saying that uh, Loffrey is not being honest in many circumstances, especially when it comes to those office renovations. Take a listen. Correct. I had no idea he'd moved a desk. I had no idea there was a desk at his house. I learned in November 2017, a uh, day or so before the general public learned. 
Okay. Well, that was, um, and I don't doubt the person who was, who, who was also testifying under oath who said that that's what Justice Lawfrey told them. Oh, I have no doubt that that's he true. Those are honorable not, people. He was not telling them the truth if, that was the, if that's what he told them, correct? Yes. Certainly a lot of confusion going on on the House floor today, guys. I can tell you the testimony and the questioning from delegates has been mm -hmm. all over the place, most sure. of it centering around Justice Lawfrey, Erica, and Tim, but uh, also Justice Davis and Walker have come up multiple times. Still a lot going on here. I'll keep you posted and be live at 5 and 6. All right. Hey, thanks, Jatera. Yeah, this could be one that goes well into the evening yeah, hours. Yeah, a lot of people so surprised that yeah. all of the names are being... When this first started, a lot right. of people thought this was just all about Lawfrey, but yeah. the, uh, apparently there are other here. names mm -hmm. that are coming up. Yeah. More so. to come from this, and again, we'll check back in with Jatera on First at Five. Now to an update on Decision 2018. Today, West Virginia Secretary of State Mac Warner denied Don Blankenship's request to run for U.S. Senate in the general election. He says he will not approve the candidacy application filed by Blankenship. Warner notified Blankenship just this morning by letter of his decision. Blankenship ran as a Republican in the May primary and lost to West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. The former coal operator filed Tuesday to run for the U.S. Senate, this time, though, in the Constitution Party. Blankenship has indicated before that he would appeal Warner's decision if he was ruled ineligible to run. Still ahead, choosing paper over plastic. We'll have the latest in the growing backlash over our soft drink accessories, those plastic straws. And then coming up in about 10 minutes, Rip Current Rescue. We will show you how a bunch of people came together along the coast to help get someone out of the ocean's grip. And we have just a few clouds across the area. This is just setting us up for maybe a spotty shower as we head into the afternoon tomorrow. Frontal system will drop the humidity and we'll talk details straight ahead. Welcome. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. That's our truck. There are cars. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Get 18% below MSRP on all 2018 Chevy Equinox LT models when you finance with GM Financial. That's almost $5,400 on this Equinox. See your five-star Chevy dealer. With these hands. We get attached to the patients, so we care for them as we would our own family members. I want my patients to be cared for the way I would want someone to care for my family. When I care for a, an elderly patient, I imagine it's my mother or my grandparent, and I would care, provide the care for them that I would expect or desire for, for my loved one. I love helping people. I try to put myself in if this was my family member or how would I want them to be treated. Sodexo, the Marshall University food service provider, will be holding a job fair to hire 60 to 75 workers on July 30th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in room BE5 of the Marshall University Memorial Student Center. Application assessment and interviews will be done on-site, looking for food preparers, food servers, baristas, cashiers, and waiters for future events on the Marshall University campus. For more information on how to join the Sodexo team, call 304-696-3256 or visit the website. We want you to give Todd Judy Ford a try. So we're going to bring the savings to you. 1,000 Fords and three young vehicles were transported to Quincy, Charleston, and Barbersville for the Todd Judy Ford 10th event. 50 cars under $10,000. Lexus LS 430, only 69,000 miles, zero down, $179 a month. Through Saturday at the Walmart in Quincy, Patrick Street, Kmart, and the Huntington Mall. We're giving away a vehicle at every location. See the details and register online at wintodscar.com. There's growing backlash against plastic straws, mm -hmm. and it's the final straw for many cities and businesses implementing bans against the single-use tubes. It's, the whole goal is to cut down on plastic right. waste to, you know, help the environment. But it could take, it could make life more complicated for sure. some groups of people who rely on plastic straws individually. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure what we're talking about, Liz McLaughlin joins us with the details. Plastic straws are quickly becoming takeout taboo. Major businesses, college campuses, and cities, including Seattle and Malibu, are banning plastic straws. 
Many hope these bans will help reduce plastic waste, polluting our oceans. We don't really need plastic straws. I think they're kind of out of date. We can just sip out of cups. But that's not an easy task for everyone. Taylor Woodward has athetosis, a condition similar to cerebral palsy, and relies on straws to safely consume liquids. For me, having a straw is all about accessibility and freedom. There are a growing number of alternatives to plastic straws, but they still may not be safe for some people with disabilities. This metal and glass version can be an injury risk, even chip teeth. And the paper ones can tear easily once they're wet. That can be a choking hazard. Many businesses, including Starbucks, say they will continue to have plastic straws available for those who need them. As long as stores still have them available, I think that's really important to ensure that people with disabilities can be part of the community and access the same food and beverage that their peers without disabilities are. Ensuring access to the people who need straws while limiting waste from those who don't. Okay, the folks at Starbucks say that they do plan to phase out straws mm -hmm. uh, by 2020. And yeah. Marriott recently joined the effort to stop using plastic straws. More cities may soon ban them. Right, right now, proposals are in the works in New York, in D.C., and San Francisco. I'm sure there's going to be more to follow, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, Santa Barbara also passed an ordinance that could actually punish restaurant employees with $1,000 fines or even some jail time wow. if they're caught actually handing out those plastic straws to customers. But people who support having straws say they worry these harsh citywide bans could deter restaurants and bars from having straws available for, like you saw in the story, for people who are disabled. Yeah, and I think, uh, obviously, you have to make exceptions for sure. people with disabilities, just right. like, you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act it installs cur mandates right. cities to install curb cuts. I'm sure that we can, as a society, Create allow people exception. to have their plastic straws right. if they need them. It's just that makes common sense. Yeah. All right, as we go to break, let's take a live look outside from our Ashland weather cam. Nice day all around the region today, Chelsea. And this weekend is also going to be nice from start to finish, but we have the opportunity for a stray shower tomorrow, and I'll talk details up next. Check out what happened along Emerald Isle in North Carolina. A bunch of beachgoers out there actually worked together to save some swimmers caught out there in the rough surf. This happened yesterday. Dozens of people locked arms and formed a human chain. At wow. least one person wow. died in those heavy rip currents. It was a 41-year-old swimmer. There were six other water rescues along that same stretch of beach in Emerald Isle in just a matter of minutes. And normally, I've, I've been to that area, Emerald yeah. Isle, uh, normally that is not a really big high surf area. The water is relatively calm in that particular stretch of Carolina and you don't have really rough waves. Um, in fact, if, if you want to do body surfing or anything like that, you'll be a little disappointed usually in Emerald Isle. So that was really unexpected, and maybe that's why it caught so many swimmers off guard. I mean, they do have the red flag warnings right. up, so I wonder how many people just like... Ignored. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, right. And rip currents are no joke. They take you out, and that's it. Right. You can't, you can't swim and right. fight. You can't fight them. No, you just have to, as they say, swim with it and try Par to slowly work the, your way. Yeah. yeah, parallel to yep. the shoreline to get yeah. out of it. Yesterday but. it was worse apparently. Yeah. We have some showers in our forecast mm -hmm. for tomorrow but not much really and this from Friday action into early next week. But even then, it's going to be so much needed rain, right? I mean, yeah. we've yeah. had a few passing showers right. but nothing widespread and consistent. So right. we could use some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll wash the dog next week and let the rain wash the soap away. There you go. Work out. Stick the dog outside. <laughs> there you go. Use another nature. I should be happy with that. All right. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Chelsea. Chelsea. When we come back, we have a real story about perseverance. Yeah, from a real life example. Stay with us. Well, today we are talking about overcoming and we actually have a positive role model mm -hmm. from our area that's just a perfect example of that. Yep, Leisha Lee from Charleston is here um, yeah. going from a kid in a rough neighborhood mm -hmm. in Charleston, a housing project, Orchard Manor, uh, to an entrepreneur. Well, DJ, a lot of people may be like, hey, she was on 98.7. Especially yeah. when they start to, to hear that voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you have to be excited because this is a play that you've been working on yes. that's based on your book. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Tell, Tell us, us about, about this it. play. Okay, the play is based off the book. I grew up in um, Orchard Manor mm -hmm. in the 80s when, you know, crack first hit. Oh, yeah. So 
a lot of people may think that it was like hard for us, but that's all we knew, so it was home. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to, to express to the kids that are growing up now, you know, it's not hard to to be who you want to be. So all you have to do is just chase your dreams and make it possible. I actually wrote the book on my iPhone in the notes section. Wow. Yeah. The That's the way thing. you did it. That's the way I did it. You did the my book. iPhone. And that this is, is the book. Yeah. And I was confused because I was like, well, that's not that's your not name, Fiona Watson. Yeah. And, yeah. But that's your pen name. That's my pen name. That's your pen yeah. name, which yes. is kind of neat in its way. And it's called Based on a Woo Story. And, yes. and Woo, the Woo is what everybody called Orchard Manor. Yeah, that's the nickname, the Woo. I'm an Orchard Manor kid. I'm a Woo Hoo kid. Yeah, you're <laughs> so, the Woo Woo kid. So yes. the, the growing up in Orchard Manor, and I think you, you, you alluded to this a little bit here, mm -hmm. uh, that everybody says, oh, it must be terrible, they're horrible. But when you're a kid, and that's all you know, you guys had a lot of fun. This was, you know... In amidst a lot of violence that was yes. going on in the 80s with the crack ep mm -hmm. epidemic, uh -huh. this is where you grew up. So you also have good memories there, too. I have more so good memories than yeah. I do bad because it's, I guess we were taught like not to grow up and be a statistic because it was important. Like, education was always important, stressed in my household. Mm -hmm. So even though... My grandfather used to always say, these bricks does not define you. You know, it doesn't limit what you could do out of si outside of that. Even though you don't have a gold uh, silver spoon, you have a gold mine. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. what's in your mind that counts the most. So Wow. So I got to ask, how did you come up with the idea to first write a book? Oh, yeah. Um, I started it on Facebook, actually, because okay. I used to always joke and say I was going to write a book. Yeah. So I started putting the chapters. I would write them in my notes and put the chapters up on Facebook. And, uh -huh. of course, the people that lived in Orchard Manor, yeah. you know, they would say post more and more. So it kept right. going, and then I had the book. And now it's turned into a play, and this is Look video we got to do rehearsal. Those are my superstars. So they're in the play. Tonight. They're in the play. Those are, okay. and they're all local talent. Oh, wow. Nobody has any acting experience. Just like I don't have any book writing experience yeah. or play. Um, Norm Branch from Huntington. He okay. directed. The, he wrote, co-produced the play with me. And those are the kids that are all in the play. How and did you decide to go that route and and have local people involved in this? Because. Um, we really don't have a lot to do, especially from where I, where I come from. Uh -huh. So sometimes you just have to create it. So the uh -huh. Wu way is to create something out of nothing. I and we're doing that. this with like no budget. We've been fundraising, fish fries, car washes, and we managed to no get budget. it done. No it's budget. It's not like you're getting oh, money, goodness, money yeah. from the uh, the Arts Foundation yeah. or anything nothing. like that. All fish fries own. and car washes on, on the west side. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the kids come out and the parents help and that's the way we do it. So we've How been, excited are you awesome. that this has actually taken place? I'm beyond I'm excited because the kids, um, the community has actually stepped up a lot. So many local people have stepped up to donate money mm -hmm. for kids that may not be able to afford to go to purchase tickets. Yeah. So, so far we have like 90 kids tickets that are paid for okay. through the community. And this is a very uplifting story. When people come to see this play, which by the way, we'll give you the details on where you can okay. see it. When people come to see this play, uh, they don't have to be from Orchard Manor. They can be from a, another here, right? community yeah. completely. And, and they're going to be able to get something out of this. Talk about how uplifting this play is. It, it basically is dedicated to my cousin, Hakeem. He was killed mm -hmm. in on the east end of Charleston. And it was right because I used to throw teen parties for kids at the mm -hmm. Tiscawall Center. So I dedicated the book to him because I want kids to understand that it's okay to make mistakes, but that doesn't mean that you can't always start over and become a better person. Every day that you have, a, that you focus on your goal is a day towards becoming a better you. Yeah, I love it. And that. the kids that are in the play, they are like talent. It's raw talent. That's yeah. why I use kids yeah. because they, even though they don't have any experience, the fact that they want to do it and yeah. their drive, they the this, this show just I just if I could just encourage the city of Charleston to come out and see the, all the hard work and effort these kids put into awesome. it. I'm so proud of them. Oh, you oh, have to be. Yeah. Because you, know, you see a little bit of yourself in those kids. Oh yeah, of course, of yeah. course, because they have like big dreams, and I just want to encourage them to go for it. Because who's it? I mean, I wrote a book on the iPhone. Yeah. yeah I designed true. the cover on the iPhone. I marketed it on the iPhone. Like right. when it didn't cost me a thing. It just. I just had to use what's well, up here. Well, it's at the Capitol yeah. Theater. Capitol Theater. In August downtown 10th Charleston. And 11. August 10th and 11th Perfect. is when you can catch that show. August yes. 10th and 11th at the Capitol Theater at 7 p.m. Is that what time? Eight. Doors open at 7. Show starts at 8 o'clock. Okay. okay. And yes. your book's available too if you yes. want to go there to it is. Get it on Amazon. Based on Woo Story. Yes. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah. You can find it right there. So. 
This is great. Alicia, thanks so much for coming no, here and talking about this. Thank you, guys. I this. appreciate it's it. It's a great effort, and I'm glad you, she reached out to me on Twitter and said, would you guys be interested? And I started yes. reading about it. <laughs> yes, of course we would. So yeah, just a gr stuff. it's a great opportunity. And maybe someday you'll be back on the air again. So thanks. Yeah. she's a little oh, busy right now directing a play. <laughs> so. right. Never too busy for you, too. No. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Still ahead on First Look at for a special occasion. We'll show you a rare site called The Pony Swim. And yeah, it's pretty much exactly as it sounds. So we are inching closer and closer yeah. to the weekend. It almost seems like we're getting better weather as we get there, too, right? It's funny how it works yeah. out like that. A lot of people <laughs> have outdoor events planned this weekend, right. and why not? It's the middle of the summer. So what can we expect? For more on that, we turn to Chelsea with a look at the days ahead. If you're in downtown Logan right now, beautiful. you're looking at beautiful skies. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Gorgeous. and it's going to be a beautiful weekend, too. Uh -huh. The humidity is going to be down, oh, yeah. full sunshine, yeah. maybe just some hazy skies, uh -huh. kind of like what we have passing through mm -hmm. today. But before we get there, <clears throat> there is a small opportunity for our work week next week. So Monday, Tuesday does have some wet weather uh, still moving back in. Hmm. Okay. Good stuff. Good deal with that. All right. yeah. Thanks, Chelsea. Good weekend. Thanks, Chelsea. Every year, some of the uh, wild ponies on an mm -hmm. island uh, off of the Virginia coast are auctioned off. But right. it, it's the, the way the annual tradition is carried out that makes this such a special occasion. Yeah, the herd makes it from one island to the next. Uh -huh by swimming. Yes. Yeah, Carrie Sanders joins us now with an up-close look. It's a roundup unlike any other. It's like being a kid on Christmas morning, getting up and seeing all the horses coming out here. These wranglers called saltwater cowboys, driving more than 100 ponies into the muddy marshes through the oyster bed shallows along the Virginia coast. Ponies no taller than four feet six inches tall, accompanied by their young foals. The final 400 yard swim to shore. Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. One of those images that sticks for a lifetime. What I just saw was exciting. You could see with my eyes are watering up. It's emotional. It all happens so up close and personal, at times, even spectators guide lost horses back to the herd. Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. That was the most amazing experience. But how did these ponies get here? The legend goes a Spanish galleon carrying ponies to the gold mines in Peru ran into a storm and shipwrecked on a shoal off of Assateague Island. 19 ponies made it ashore and multiplied. To keep the island from being overrun, the federal government now limits the size of a constantly growing herd. So every year, most of the ponies are driven from Assateague to Chincoteague. And some of the colts are auctioned off. First made famous by the book Mistia Chincoteague more than 70 years ago, then came the movie. Isn't she beautiful? A brother and sister spy a pony, name her Misty, hoping to win her at auction. That's a great story, and it should be passed down from Hitter. Once on shore, the saltwater cowboys parade the herd down Main Street. The ponies, the stars. Those on horseback, like Scuzzy, who's been doing this for own right. You tell me anywhere in the United States or the world you can go do this. It's a privilege and an honor. It felt magical. Something about it just seemed perfect. Corralled. Families gather to look at the colts, hoping they'll get one of the wild animals at auction. For as wild as you are, you're remarkably friendly and tame. Yes, you are. <laughs> Keep saying no, but I say yes. And for the kids, they have some funny ideas of what they'll do if they're lucky enough to take one home. I told Papa we go, we're gonna put him in a bed. When you get dark, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get one of these ponies and put them in your bed. Uh -huh. A coastal tradition, captivating eyes of children of all ages, hoping to one day have their own Misty. Oh, I love wow. it. We're going to put them in bed, Dad. Put them in bed. It, it <laughs> speaks to uh, how well they're doing yeah. in, in their, their self-breeding that they're doing over right. on Chincoteague Island. That's the fact awesome. that they keep having this auction because obviously they're not endangered. The right. herd is doing just fine. This is incredible. Wow. Hey, the money raised from the auction, by the way, funds the volunteer fire department there. Yeah, it's even better, right? And yeah. the adult ponies will swim back to the island, and that's how they manage the herd.
A bucket list thing to do. It's very cool. I've been there. I've, I've looked at it. I haven't been there during that particular mm -hmm. time. I think that's going to be a bucket list thing because when For you go sure. there, you can see them on the island and they're all over the place. And you know, you're supposed to stay at a, a distance like a away, distance, but it's yeah. it's hard not to get too close yeah. because they're so well mannered and so well behaved. It's so beautiful. It's, too. It is a very yeah. cool thing to see. Yeah. Coming up, how about some lasagna? Oh yeah, we brought in a little professional help too to make the perfect pan. Stay with us. All right, I'm excited. Very excited. <laughs> Today is national, it's a, it's a national holiday mm -hmm. of epic proportion. It is National Lasagna Day, so of course we heard about it. Boom, we had to celebrate. Yeah, and we are bringing in a pro to do all of mm -hmm. this. This is uh, Corey Alkire with Olive Garden showing us how to make really the perfect lasagna because that's key. It's a real work of art, not right. only how it looks, but also, you know, in the layering and getting it right so it tastes good. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that's key. Yeah, well, first off, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, really thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank We're you happy very to, much. Happy to have you. Uh, yeah, I wanted to come by and talk about some uh, great things that's going on with the Olive Garden right now. Oh, so, right. Uh, with the Olive Garden, uh, family is very important to us uh, yeah. at the Olive Garden, um, and we understand that life gets very busy. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, uh, making a family dinner every night is not always an option, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which is why happens. our guests love our buy one, take one promotion that we have yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. um, is this included in it? This is is included. That's the exciting oh, thing about it. Okay. So for the first okay. time in about six years we've had this promotion, right. lasagna is going to be an option. So um, what I wanted to do is just take a few minutes, being that uh, National Lasagna Day coming up, mm -hmm. thought I'd swing by and have you guys help me build a lasagna. Let's Sounds do good. it. Sounds good? Okay. Sound good? All right, let's do it. Okay, so what we're going to do first, <clears throat> got our pan here that we have to coat the pan. Okay. That is key. That is key. Right yes. there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, anybody that who's done any cooking trouble. knows that. Yeah. That's for sure. Now, I was hoping I could get a little bit of help. What do you okay. think? You got oh, it. Yeah. You tell me what I'll to do. All right. So this is our, our classic meat sauce. And again, this is made fresh every day. That goes in so the pan first? So let's just do a small layer. Yep. Oh. So we're actually doing pan. meat first, not, yeah. not noodles. Meat first. Okay. Yep. okay. Interesting. How much am I? Uh, All right. So let's go ahead and, and lay it across lay the bottom. Yeah, don't, don't be scared of it. Get in there. There you go. Throw it right. Perfect. In. Perfect. Good. So okay. we're going to okay. flatten that out in there. Okay. All right. One of these. One of these. You want to jump in? Sure. Yeah. A noodle. Yep. I just washed my hands, so I'm good. Lay it flat. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Wait a minute. Pull that over a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. This All is right. Our, our cheese blend. Oh, is that ricotta, ricotta? mozzarella? Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yum, yes. All right. So let's do a couple spoonfuls of that across okay. the top there. There you go. Tony, you guys are doing great. All right. So you just toss it toss it right in like that. Yeah. Okay. Toss it in. Then we'll flatten it out. Okay. I got to ask you about the noodles because this is another key part of this. I've had some lasagna that I did not think was good, and mm -hmm. it was because the noodles were like hard. Oh, yeah. That's, okay. Yeah, that's important. It is. Very okay. Important. So mash it. All right, let's get it flattened down in there. Let's do some more meat sauce oh, right on top of that. More meat sauce. More meat sauce. Uh huh. Don't be shy. There you go. I'm throwing it on. Put it in there. Right, perfect. Good. All right. Okay. Perfect. Lay it in there. One more layer. Let's put this uh, noodle. Okay. Ready? Pasta layer on top. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I noticed you have a little olive oil on there. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. Good. Those are. See, there's some olive oil. You can see it's shining right there. Very good. All okay. right. We're gonna do a little bit more of this. Okay. You guys are naturals at this. I'm telling you. Or We've just been doing a lot of this. Yep. Yeah. When you have the pro here helping yeah. you. All right. So mash Perfect. that down again. Perfect. Did you know there's okay. this many layers in it? You probably didn't. I, I did. probably didn't because right. I don't usually partake in this, this part. Of it. I just partake in the eating part. I've right. done most yeah. of these wrong then my whole yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. My, my right. wife's maiden name is Giuliani, Perfect. so I get this to eat the eating part. So <laughs> she makes her own lasagna and it's it's really, really, Let's do really one good. more layer on the top. All right. And then there we're we going to hit it with some of that. Some more of the sauce. More of the ricotta sauce. Here, you start on the sauce. I'll start mashing this down. Here we go. Mm. Oh, but first we have to mash down the ricotta, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so put that on there. Maybe a little more, right? Okay. And we mash. Let's give it a mash on there. Okay. And let's put the rest of that meat sauce meat on sauce. top. There we go. Okay. All right. See, I bet you you do a better job of mashing. I know. Ours maybe doesn't look as pretty as yours. It looks great. It looks great. Okay. <laughs> right. looks so great. it doesn't have to be perfect is what you're saying because I guess it cook, when it cooks, right. yeah. it heats across. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all that's right. that's all you do? Almost. Almost. Then we're going to top it off with our mozzarella blend here. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Got to cheese. have the cheese on top, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're, you don't want to be shy with that either. No, 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 no. Lay that cheese across. We are fans Yum. of cheese. All right. And then we got... We just uh, cover it with foil. Mm -hmm. 
And that's and then, it. Yeah, Into the oven. Wow. Into the oven. What yeah. about the, uh, the seasoning? Right so that is our parsley. parsley. Uh, we put that on the finished product. Ah, okay. okay. All right. So once it's wrapped like this. It goes in the oven. 350, one hour. And we'll set this off to the Into side. Into the oven. And then Voila. out of the it? oven. And an hour later. Magic of TV. TV. Magic. Da, da, da. Look, how delicious there it is. Yeah, this is one of our yeah. catering lasagnas that we have to offer also. Oh, that is goodness. awesome. And this is this isn't a prop, right? This is real. That is real. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's hot. That I can is feel real. It. Oh, yes. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so right now I'm going to okay. continue to eat uh, these Croutons. because we don't have a fork to cut this right now. Mm -hmm. But trust me, we're going to eat it. We will eat it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and, and again, this is something that's offered on our buy one, take one right now. So you can buy one, take yep. one, okay. Guests choose from seven entrees, uh, and then they get to take their second home, and this is the first time that the lasagna's been offered. So Make your family happy, and you can do this. All you have to do is go there. He'll make it for you. Sure. So you don't have to worry about all the labor is taken care of. And did you see how fast Corey made that? How long does it usually take you... To, to make the average meal. Lasagna seems to be a little bit To easier. make lasagna from scratch? Yeah. A couple minutes. That's seconds, it. really. Yeah, okay. I mean, you it's pretty... You can together that fast. Yeah, pretty quick, yep. And then uh, bake it for an hour, let it set. Um, okay. And get in. Oh, we have some over here. This is pre-made, too, right? Yeah, I got some silverware there for you. Oh, you what was I waiting for? <laughs> okay. And you were doing great with Look, this, I have though. silverware right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just... I'm going to yeah. take a... Look how many layers. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, yum, this yum, is yum, thick. yum, yum. Is right. Okay. okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Good? That's oh, the way to do now. lasagna. Now I'm happy. Mm. Wow, this is how we do first look at four. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. Mm. That is so good. Excellent job. Thank you very much. You guys did great, great yourself. job, Corey. Yeah. Terrific. Good wow. stuff. Thanks for coming You're here. Welcome. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Appreciate you having us. All right. So as we go to the break, we will continue to eat food. But right now, <laughs> we're going to take a live look outside from our Summersville weather camp. Yeah, and Chelsea's back with that updated forecast. And then the next best chance for showers is Monday and Tuesday across our region. Even Wednesday, though, high only mm. near 80 degrees. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. I found breadsticks. Just like uh, the breadstick. Right yeah. over there. I'm, <laughs> mm. I'm just glad that uh, I wore white and I didn't spill yeah. anything on it yet. Not that's anyway. a pro right there. <laughs> I am really distracted Maybe when everyone's it. running around yeah. during mm. the forecast. I have, to, I have to think. Like She yeah. has to think about Don't weather. Don't eat. She has to ignore us. Yeah. That's probably the most difficult part. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry, we'll go to a commercial and you can eat. Oh, yeah. And uh, speaking of which, after the break, uh, we are talking about safety for your summer getaway. Yeah, but not what's in the water. We're talking about umbrellas in the sand. Stay with us. All right, so now to an unexpected summer danger, beach umbrellas. They can fly right through the air and can seriously hurt someone. Yeah, in fact, two sunbathers were impaled oh, by umbrellas just last week. Oh. Jeff Rawson joins us with a look at some dramatic video and also has some tips you need to stay safe. Caught on camera, a gust of wind shooting more than a dozen of these umbrellas into the air, flying across the sand, nearly crashing right into people. Beach umbrellas going rogue, now flying missiles. These umbrellas barely missing this cameraman. And it happens all the time. Eyewitnesses posting videos on YouTube. Like this umbrella, flying out of control, high in the air. An umbrella impaled the lady's leg. Just last week on the Jersey Shore, a woman was impaled in the ankle by a flying umbrella. And it happened again just days ago on this beach in Ocean City, Maryland. A flying umbrella impaling another woman, this time in the chest. In fact, according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, about 3,000 people each year are rushed to emergency rooms for injuries involving umbrellas. So how much wind does it take to pull an umbrella out of the sand? To show you, we've come here to South Carolina. This is the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety in their giant wind tunnel. I mean, take a look down here at all of those industrial strength fans. They can simulate any level of wind. They've also built us this. It's a huge sandbox. And Yes, this is real sand, real beach sand right here, so we can simulate this for you. We have our beach towel, our beach ball, and of course the beach umbrella with a little spike on the end. We are going to put this into the sand, much like you would if you were at the beach, and we're really getting it in here, about 10 inches to a foot down. Getting in there, good. Pack it in. The umbrella is up. 
Now I'm going to open the umbrella up again, much like you would at the beach. It's not always pretty at the beach, but you do it. Okay, so it's in there, and we're going to kick up the kick up the wind. Let me come down here and see what happens. In the control room, they're getting ready. Okay, let's fire up the wind in three, two, one. First, they crank the wind to 10 miles per hour. Okay, we're up at 10 miles per hour right now. Pretty typical wind speed along the shoreline. And this is what's happening to the umbrella, blowing around in the wind a little, but it is still inside the ground. But just watch what happens when we take it up just a notch to 15 miles per hour. We're gonna keep an eye on the umbrella right here. And there it goes, flying, whoa! Could you imagine if you were on the blanket right next to this or even down the beach a little bit with that spike? And that's a pretty typical gust for a shoreline. It's nuts. Here it is from another angle. As the umbrella is ripped out of the sand, the spike is flying through the air, smashing right into our camera that's weighed down by heavy sandbags. But at the beach, gusts go even higher than that. Okay, now we're doing 20 miles per hour, which would be a gust on the shore. I'm holding it down. I'm gonna let go. Whoa! This time, the umbrella flying Whoa. even faster, and we notice something that. else. That spike flying through the air, and look how it ended up. Spike up. There. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I've seen it happen before. I haven't seen anybody oh. impaled, but I've watched them sail through the air. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's frightening. Yeah. I mean, I'm tumbling. A lot of times you'll see them tumbling, and that in itself can be scary because if it turns like this and hits somebody who's not paying attention, maybe they're be sleeping on the beach. Sleeping on the beach, and yeah. you know that can happen. So, uh, of course, the question is, how do you properly secure mm -hmm. the beach umbrella? Well, first, you want to take your umbrella and bury it in the sand with a, a rocking back and forth motion. Most people just kind of stab it into the sand. That's not what you want to do. Yeah, a good rule of thumb, they say, is just to bury that umbrella at least a third of the way down in the sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to watch out for wind, too. That's yep. another factor. Yeah, you got to tilt it. Yeah. Make sure to do it that way. Yeah, and if all fails, buy a sand anchor. Sand anchors work, or you can just eat all of the lasagna yourself and just and lean on, on the umbrella. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs>